Well, temperatures dropped about 40 degrees overnight and you definitely feel it. But what's nice about it is, is we are in the home stretch and I think just that adrenaline knowing that today's the deadline and the finish day is giving us a little bit of extra energy and a warmth while we're working our way through. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. As you guys saw last night, we worked until dark and uh, had the lights on, got a few rocks set, but importantly got that bottom waterfall set, which is a great jumping off point today. So we have all five guys back out here and we are going to split up into two teams. Jack and Chris are gonna focus on kind of finishing everything up, working their way back behind us, while JD, Juan and I are going to start working on the waterfalls coming down from that slope all the way back up over there on the other side of the catwalk. So you can see Jack's over here, kind of cleaning up this area, getting all the rest of the stone that we didn't use for the main section down here. We're going to stage it up on the driveway so that we have everything nice and close and have all of our selection there as we're working our way up. It's going to be a challenging waterfalls because of the grade change, but we're going to be able to take care of this. JD's over there grabbing a bag of the small gravel and we're going to go ahead and start peppering in this stream, getting that done. We've got our lights set and we just have clean up and edge work to work our way out and we will be hopefully out of here pretty early on this afternoon, but we will see. Only the day will tell. So we don't think we're gonna hit our deadline. We still have an enormous amount of work left to do, but I think we kind of underestimated, JD, like the intricacy and the challenge that this tall water pose is gonna present. You guys can hear it but we are finished water is flowing and it is absolutely incredible i know we had a little bit of technical difficulties the camera died around the last 15 percent of this project but guess what we are back the camera is now rolling i want to give you guys the first look at this new incredible waterfalls now weather has changed just a little bit we've definitely dropped about 25 degrees and there are snowflakes flying but as you can see in the waterfalls behind me we are already starting to get ice castle formations and that's one of my favorite parts about any water feature is the change in the seasons especially when it's getting colder and that ice starts to form it just makes it look magical we don't even need mother nature to make this thing look magical this thing looks incredible let's take a walk up and let you guys check out the last kind the 10 15 percent that you missed out on earlier in the video so if you remember we were kind of in this section in here which was that bottom waterfall pooling area and we always want to try and change direction but also change the look of waterfalls as we're going up so we had kind of a bale style waterfalls which is about a foot wide and about a foot and a half tall and then we got up in here and changed the direction of it and did more of a canyon style waterfalls where the water's pinched between two rocks and it's all shooting out between those two rocks in a different direction than the waterfall behind so as you work your way up you can see the different directions the different widths in the waterfalls, the different heights. We really wanted to make this thing look unique and interesting. And it doesn't always look that way when you do the same thing over and over and over, much like a staircase, which is what we always try and avoid. And I think this turned out incredible. I love the aqua blues. I love the angularity, the geometry of the rocks, how they fit together. This was an incredibly challenging waterfalls to build because it's about a nine and a half foot grade change from all the way up there, all the way down here to below me. And because of the size of the rocks we really had to be strategic as to the rock placement we took a lot of tall skinny rocks and stood them up in order to build up rather than having to build back you heard me talk in other episodes about we don't like to stack rock on top of each other because that's never the way you see it in nature they're always staircase back behind so when rocking this in we really had to be choosy when it came to rocking this section and it turned out incredible and made some very dramatic waterfalls so let me show you what i really love and talk about 
the difference in waterfalls. You've got these three waterfalls right here. They all look slightly different. Actually, they all look very differently, but the way the rocks twist and turn and, and come together really offer that change in direction. And I love how the sphere is just nestled into the top, initiating that headwaters. But not only is it visible from this beautiful catwalk right here, the three season room inside the house behind you, but it's also visible from the driveways. It gives you an incredible amount of curb appeal without really knowing what's all behind it. So I love the fact that you can see the crest of that sphere just as you pull up into the driveway. It's lit up at night gorgeously, but then it piques your imagination because you want to see what's past it. So then as you walk through and into the three season room or up to the house, you really get a good idea of what's back here. Again, adding to the drama of this beautiful water feature. So as we get all the way up here, this is that area that I'm talking about. This is that upper pooling area. This is all inside the liner. Our three inch line comes right in through here through a bulkhead fitting in the liner. And then there's a manifold underneath this sphere. So we've got part of our three inch line feeding the sphere. And then the other part is discharging down below, actually starting off the waterfalls. So we're only using about a thousand gallons here. And the other maybe 5,000 or so of it is all coming through the other part of that manifold. You can see the ice is already starting to form, but notice how it's not touching the sphere at all. The worst thing you want to do, especially when they're frozen like this, is come in here and break apart all this ice. Because what will happen is this ice will end up forming over the top of this sphere and it's insulating the water that's continuing to flow underneath it. You break apart that ice, expose the running water to the elements again, and it starts building on top of itself and it can actually create an ice dam causing a leak, which you don't want to have happen, especially when it's 15 degrees outside like it is today. I think is really cool is this catwalk. You guys saw us talk about it as a challenge on this project and working underneath it when placing the boulders. But what we didn't really talk about was how cool it was once you finally got up here, which I actually forgot about until we finished the project, came up here and looked down. But look at this. You look down and you get to see all the pooling areas, the cascading water. And then you turn over to this side and you can see the stream twisting and turning and meandering underneath. It's just such a cool vantage point from up here, leading you to this incredible three season room where all that audible energy is focusing back towards. Just so cool to be up here. Why don't we go this way and we'll go down and, and walk through the feature the way we talked about with this stepper staircase leading to our big stone slabs that we brought in. Now it was super important to understand elevations and the reason why is we wanted to make everything fit together without tearing apart that whole staircase we just walked down. But look at these enormous slabs of Black Hills rustic and you can see the rust color really doesn't stick out. They don't feel orange compared to the aqua blues because you still have a lot of that in these stones as well so i love that they're married together stylistically they're very flat angular but they have the variation in colors they look like close cousins of each other in rock life that's the thing rock cousins. they're related rocks rock cousins. rock cousins yes but i love how they just kind of all flow through here i love the fact that you see this stream working its way through the movement on this project is probably one of the better projects that we've done this year and that's simply because of the selection of stone. It's not because we did anything really any different than we normally do. It just went together so seamlessly and looks incredible. I love the twisting and turning. I love the fact that you have these big chunks of aqua blues and just, oh, it just looks so incredible. So you can see we've got this piece right in here that is like a big flat slab, but we put it in the water so that you really only get about a triangle of it. And it's really kind of twisting and turning. So understanding where water level is, but using the characteristics of these big, big angular stones and helping them dictate the direction of the water. So putting them out in certain areas opposite from each other and creating these twists and turns, it just is so much fun working with them because you're able to use them to create such great movement in a stream system like we did here. I love that it comes down through here. I really, I can't tell you how much I love doing these kind of peekaboo bridge elements where the water rips between them, but you still see the design techniques using the aqua blues where the sheet water, which is the 
the top water, the surface water, comes in and out as far as the footprint where it backs up to the rocks. I just love when that's able to happen. This is our reservoir area. This is that thousand gallon reservoir where we had the 15 double stacked aqua blocks. Down in here, you've got our pump vaults. We've got an SLD five to nine that's attached to a three inch trunk line that runs all the way back up there to the top of the hill by the driveway where the sphere sits. It's a pretty simple system, but it looks incredibly complex just based on the interactivity, the way the rock was set, the sphere, the challenge of the waterfalls. Again, working underneath that catwalk, but it just turned out so, so incredibly awesome. cool build this was to be a part of. The rest of Team Aquascape did an amazing job. Jack, Jack, Juan, Chris, myself, we had so much fun building this project. It created its own set of unique challenges, but of course we prevailed as, as we always do. But how would you not love to have this set up in your backyard? Thanks for watching everybody. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments section below. Until next time, we really appreciate you tuning in. Every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Don't forget to click that notification bell and stay up to date on all the incredible content that we're coming out with three times a week. Thanks again, we'll see you later.